Today on Real Life, Defeating the Enemy. Former SWAT team member, Pastor Phil Hopper, exposes the tactics of Satan and how to overcome his schemes. On Sister to Sister, what do you say to a friend who says they've married the wrong person? The ladies give their advice. On Real Life Coaching, Tom Gardner explains the power found in living by the word and breath of God. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. Yeah. And the Bible, <laughs> oh, what is going on? And, and the, the Bible, Bible is, is our, our guide, guide to, to abundant, abundant life. life. Just checking. I just checked it. I didn't know whether you know. There was you know. this pause. We I were know. Like, what happened? And see, we're looking at you, mm-hmm. but he was wanting us to look at him. No, I wasn't right? at me. no I'm just listening for what would be the response. And I and you guys did it. You hit, yes, you, you, you you just hit the long drive, was, right? Well, it is baseball right. season. That was good. Or is that a long well, that drive a for golf? golf? I was looking at a golf <laughs> reference. <laughs> But you can't well, allow driving really baseball know, like, too. Golf. But we did have opening day in Pittsburgh, and you know, several weeks ago, and it snowed, it snowed on our snowed opening, opening day. day. So it's been a, it's already been a life. Welcome to the big leagues. I'm Don Black. I'm your host, and I'm here with my beautiful <laughs> bride and host, co-host Terry, and our co 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 host, hey. Pastor Amy Schaefer. That's right. We're so glad you're here. Mm-hmm. So yes. glad that you've joined us. So many people. You know, Amy, it, it seems like God is just drawing more people when we get out in public. The full places, full four, four places I go in public. Yeah, <laughs> the people here. come out and say hello. I yeah, know. Right. So, so I'm at Sam's, choo, 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 you know, loading the yeah. cart, yeah. and yeah. this yeah, lady's like, "Hey, you know, I watch Cornerstone." She said, "I just want you to know that I am homebound uh, due to a disability, and I really watch Cornerstone oh. as my time of ministry and almost church, and just how grateful and thankful oh. she was for Cornerstone." adore you and mm-hmm. and thank you so much for being a part of our family. That's right. It it is fun to be out and about and yeah. we love to meet you and just want to say if if you see <laughs> us out there and you know who we are that you'll just give us a shout out and yeah, say don't, hey. Don't, don't, don't be shy to come up and say hello. We lo- I love to meet people and to talk. We, we yeah. actually, Terry and I were shopping for something at uh, one okay. of the department <laughs> stores oh. and, and uh, yeah. we won't mention the name of the store but okay. We were in there shopping, and this lady came up and started talking to Terry. We ended up having a prayer meeting. We were oh, right, yeah. we were praying with, and she yeah. prayed a powerful prayer over she us, was. and we were able to pray for her. And it just was a God, a rendezvous. <laughs> what what the fancy word is a serendipitous. That's right. Her name's Kathleen. Kathleen. Yes. We're, mm-hmm. we're, it's ex- always Aww. exciting to do that, and so we encourage you uh, to pray for us. Right. So many times you think, well, those guys got it all together. Uh-uh. No. no. <laughs> Sometimes. No. We're <laughs> walking by faith Little just time. like you're walking by faith. You know, the same things that bother you and come against you come against right. us. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're just uh, have the privilege of being able to talk to you over, over a, the television mm-hmm. channel, you know, about what's going on in our lives and the Bible. Because, you know, you've heard me say it a lot. If you're new to, to real life, this is our goal is just to be able to give you real answers. Because there's so much mess going on, Pastor Amy. There's so Mm -hmm. many uh, falsehoods going on and and lies, out and out lies when it comes to spiritual things. False Mm -hmm. teaching, Mm -hmm. doctrines of, the Bible says it's of devils. devils, That is out in our world. And if we can't discern those things, we're gonna be victims to that. Well, you said at the very beginning, the Bible is our guide. Mm-hmm. Yours and my guide to abundant life. And I, I just watched the movie recently, God's Not Dead. It's one oh. of my favorites. It's a faith-based movie. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, what a great reminder that God is not dead. He yeah. is really alive. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we think, does he even care? Yeah. Is he too big that my little issues, my little life, it, you know, what I'm going through and, and hearing all these false teachings and just the world that we live in, this God 
really care. Oh yeah, he's really alive and he really cares even about the smallest little details in your life. So man, trust him, give him your life, give him your family, give him your, your career and see what God will do with your life. Amen. 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 I do think that, uh, like you were saying, love is in the details. Yes. And yeah. that we know that God is love and He is in your details and my details and mm -hmm. all of our details. He, that just shows how much He cares and is concerned about us. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I know. Well, if we don't know the truth, we're not going to get set free. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. You turn the scripture around. You're free when you know the truth. You're in bondage when you don't. Yep. So we're dedicated to telling you the truth. You can count on this. We will always tell you the truth from the word. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be watered down or mixed up or some type of uh, intended for personal benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here to be servants and to tell you about Jesus and hear back from you. So thankful for the testimonies. If you've got a testimony yeah. that you want to share with us about what God's done in your life, we want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's power in the word of testimony. Call us at 888-665-4483. Call us right now. Say, you know, here's what the Lord's done for me. Yeah. Give him some glory today in this program. Yeah. Give him some glory. Yeah. Give God praise. Right. Right. Tell him how much you love him. Tell us what he's done for you and we share together. You know, today we're going to, we've got a special guest that is, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about how the devil comes around and he kind of gets into your business and how we let him do that mm -hmm. and how we need to be wise and how we can practically identify what he's up to mm -hmm. and then counter that with faith and empower, be victorious and do what we call winning God's way yeah. in life. Mm -hmm. How can you be a winner in Christ? Be the best you possible, right. best you possible. And when you're the best you possible, you can, you can do what only you can do, what God's made you to do. And that's to live a full and abundant life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get excited. I'm going to get ready to get excited. All right. I think you already are excited. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to slow down. Oh. <laughs> but Terry, what's up next? Well, you know, what do you say to a friend who tells you they believe they married the wrong person? Uh oh. Let's see how the women on Sister to Sister answer this Nobody question. Nobody on this panel. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Sister to Sister on Real Life. We are a segment that brings it, and you're gonna hear our <laughs> answers to the questions of the world from a biblical standpoint, and we don't, we don't mince words around here. Let me tell you <laughs> that. Okay, girls, this is really good, and I, I hope someone out there can take this to heart. What do you say to a friend who tells you that they married the wrong person? They believe they married the wrong person. Uh, I, Ooh. Uh, this, it's, that's a tough question, it really is. I recently went to a marriage conference and they said something at the conference that just really hit me. Good they or said, bad? Good. Okay. The grass isn't greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it. And that was just really Ooh, profound to good. me that's because nice. what are we doing in our marriage to water that marriage, mm -hmm. to make, you know, make the grass greener where we are now. I think so many times we just, it's too easy to look to the other side and think this is bad. This could, something else could be right. better. Mm -hmm. The grass is greener where you water it, where right. you invest That's in it. That's really good. You know, I think um, Kathy one time said, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah, really. So, yeah. <laughs> so in the words of the great yeah. Kathy, yeah. suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, I, I so agree with what you're saying, that the, the work that goes uh, into it. The only other thing is that scripturally based, though, is if you are married to a non-believer who wishes to depart you know, um, then that is something you have to take another look at. Uh, I am a firm believer in counseling. You know, I was just uh, with someone over the weekend and uh, they've been married almost 30 years and they've been in counseling almost 30, <laughs> 30 oh years. And they do it as a maintenance uh, piece, you mm. know. So just a little Good. something that they're out there. Nice. We go for everything, physical checkups, all of that. But when yeah. it comes to our marriage, that covenant, that thing, that first institution that God created was mm -hmm. family. When it comes to that, we don't always give it the attention that it needs. Wow. I do think it's really important though that you go to a Christian counselor, which I'm sure mm -hmm. that's what you're recommending. Mm -hmm. I just, I just think that, that you need that 
the strand of three cords. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I, if you're mm -hmm. getting advice from a, a non-biblical perspective, I just think that's not what the Lord is wanting you to hear. And the scripture does say that there is a good and acceptable and a perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. But when you make a covenant with somebody before God, that is the perfect That's will of right. God. Right. And you're making a covenant with them. Oh, and goodness. so, like you said, do whatever you have to, mm -hmm. to, to nurture, to, to help see your marriage and your relationship flourish. Because maybe, maybe God did bring you together mm -hmm. for a great purpose. And, and you just got to work it out and iron sharpens iron. Oh, wow. Well, wow. I am 100% with her. Mm -hmm. You know, the, as soon as I read this, the scripture that came to me, God, keeps his covenant to a thousand right. generations. Right. And we can't keep it for one generation. That's right. That's right. We made a vow, Preach. God honored that vow. A covenant is a contract. That's right. You agree to uphold it no matter what the grass is on the other <laughs> side, no matter what's going on, no matter what you think in your head, you right. have committed yourself. And this society, this be happy society is missing the point of covenant keeping. And the first step I tell a friend, don't forget your original commitment. That's right. right. Well, now I do. Can I just, just sure, interject yeah, yeah. this real quick? Just for those who maybe are in abusive situations yes. or oh, things yeah. like that, oh, yeah. you know, that I, I, and I do, I don't <coughs> believe divorce is of God, but I do believe separation is of God with the intention of restoration of coming no back question. together. Right. But for sure, if you're in an unsafe environment, we need yeah. to take another look right. at that. Well, I was going to say, can you explain mm -hmm. the three chords? I mean, maybe doesn't, maybe everyone doesn't know that. Well, it's just that concept of this, and it's in scriptural, the strand of three cords cannot quickly be broken. So two together is strong, but three, three. is stronger. That's right. And so it's that idea of interweaving the Lord in the center of your marriage. So you have that covenant where the two become one, but at the center of that cord is the Lord. Right. right. And I would say too, in every guy, there's a prince and a punk speak to the prince. I mean, speak life into your marriage. Say, you're the, you're the most amazing man. Thank you for doing this. Be grateful. Maybe change your viewpoint of him and what he's bringing into your life right. that you might know, help. You know, I've said this before, but there was a, something I read about someone complaining about their anniversary. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. He didn't do this. And the counselor said, what? Is it your birthday? No, it's your anniversary. What are you doing That's right. for him? Yes. And life isn't well, always a Hallmark do? movie. Don't make it, just, don't make, I mean, just don't make it one side, you guys. You keep saying, oh. do this for your husband. Do that for your husband. I okay. want my husband to do some things for me, too. But anyway. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's right. Sure. Just saying. Yes. I love it. We'll send, we'll send Flo to him. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you loved it, too. We're sister to sister. We'll see you next time. You know, I love the sisters. They're mm -hmm. so dynamic and I just like they all share a different perspective, but it's still, I mean, basically y'all agreed, mm -hmm. you know, Have God, you ever covenant. had somebody say, I've married the wrong person? I've never had a person come up to me. I had a, mm -hmm. a friend of mine who's, whose daughter felt they married the wrong person, yeah. you know, and they got a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised because my friends were pastors. I was surprised that they, yeah. you know, endorsed it. And I don't know all the details, but. You know, that's mm -hmm. why it's yeah. so very, very important. Now, if you're single or if you're divorced, I want to speak to you specifically about this. It's so very important that you enter into a marriage with full awareness and understanding. Mm -hmm. Don't get married quickly. You need to identify exactly what your goals are. You're going to talk about counseling for marriage is important, but counseling for getting married is more important. Mm -hmm. right. You need yep. to measure your goals and see where you are. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you get in the physical realm, when you get in the physical realm, single friend, and you start getting rom romantically involved, all the hormones change in your mind and you change the way you think. You change, logic goes away and you, now you're <laughs> all driven, you're in love and yada, yada, yada. Yep. But then you get married and then, you know, when that period goes away, which it will go away quickly, you're gonna go, what in the world did I do? So my advice is look at it really hard on the mm -hmm. front end and don't get married unless God tells you to. Right. If you, go, if you get married in any other situation, you're gonna be on um, shaky ground. Mm -hmm. Even in shaky ground though, you gotta stand strong. Yep. It's going to be stand strong. We'll be right back. We'll come back. We're going to talk about spiritual warfare and how to defeat the enemy. We'll be right back.
Israel, the land of promise. Join Cornerstone Television Network on a journey of a lifetime in the Holy Land as we celebrate Israel's 70th year of independence. Walk where Jesus walked in Jerusalem. Ride a boat across the Sea of Galilee. Experience the wonder of the Garden of Gethsemane. And so much more on this special nine-day guided tour. Join Don, Terry, and the Cornerstone family on this once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage, October 9 through 17, 2018. Spots are limited, so go online or call today for more information and to make a reservation. Discover where God's prophetic promises were made, where they were kept, and where they are yet to be fulfilled in Israel, the land of promise. Terry, as I watch that about the trip coming up in October, mm -hmm. it makes me, uh, it reminds me we're about half full. That's right, we are. That's so. Right. Well, I just want to tell you, not only are you going to have a great trip, experience the prophecy yet to be filled and see the prophecies that were fulfilled, but we are also going to give, have the opportunity to get baptized in the Jordan River. Isn't that an awesome thing? We're going to plant a tree, an olive tree there. Yeah, we're going right. to experience Shabbat, mm -hmm. you know, so we are just, and we're going to be in Old Town Jerusalem. We're going to be able to pray at the Wailing Wall. So we have a lot of great experiences that we have planned just for you and for all of us to experience a life of a, a experience a lifetime. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. hey, listen, if you have any interest in coming and going to Israel, this would be a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. We try to get our prices as low as we possibly could so that everybody could take advantage of it. So call the number on the screen and you will uh, be able to give get more information. We invite you to, to come. But, but if you're thinking about it, you better think fast. That's right. Because we're only taking one, one, one bus. That's it. That's okay. right. And we're not changing our mind this time. <laughs> <laughs> we're changing our mind to be tough. Well, you know, as I said just before we, we, we came into this, this, this segment, the body of Christ we are uh, involved in understanding strategies, see, how to overcome our spiritual enemy. First, you've got to realize there is a spiritual mm -hmm. enemy. Pastor Phil Hopper's new book, let me get a picture of it here. De oh, there it is, Defeating the Enemy, exposes those schemes that, that the devil has. Pastor Phil, thank you for coming and being well, with I'm us. I'm so excited and yeah. so honored to be a part of your real life program today. Thank you. Well, we're so glad to see you. Now, we've got a tradition mm -hmm. with our new guests and the first time you've been with us. Just to give us a little bio about you, sure. your family, where you're from, yeah. what's going on in your life. Yeah, so we're from Kansas City, Missouri. Lived there all my life and never dreamed I'd be in ministry. I was actually a member of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department for eight years back in the 90s and never dreamed I'd do anything else. Mm -hmm. Living for the Lord by that time. Mm -hmm. Certainly uh, living for Jesus on the department. And I started going to this uh, little church in a suburb of Kansas City called Lee Summit. A little church plant, just wanted to be a part of something that would uh, grow something for Jesus. And mm -hmm. young father and young family and walked through the doors that day. And it wasn't long thereafter I did surrender to ministry. Didn't know where it would be or what it would be. Well. Our pastor actually resigned under mm. kind of duress, difficult time for this little baby church. And they heard about this police officer studying for ministry. It was a Tuesday night. They needed somebody to preach on Sunday. Tells you how desperate they were, they called me. <laughs> so I thought we won and done, and uh, turns out it's 18 years later. 18 years and, later, and uh, I'm still at it. Oh wow! <laughs> well, yeah, I'm so very so that's a, that's fun. God does. He has a sense of humor, isn't yes, he? He, does. <laughs> he doesn't tell you everything ahead of time. It's a need to know basis because if right. he told you everything ahead of time, it would freak you out. Yeah. That's yeah, right. You would be I would have been freaked out. <laughs> yeah. Would have been able to deal with it. Now you, you mentioned family. So you married, and have, how many children do you have? Married, have three children. Uh, Jake's my oldest, 22. Then I have McKay, my daughter, who's 21, and my son, Josh, is 19. I just had two weddings in the last 10 months. Oh, yeah. no way! Yeah, yeah. Oh. so oh my uh, it's exciting time yeah. in our life. But uh, you know, somebody said uh, two, two weddings in 10 months, you're in purgatory. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, but it's exciting. We'll pray you out of there, yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pray you. But it could be, you might have to give a gift, or, you know, yeah, to, right. to get out of that purgatory. What got you focusing on uh, the, our spiritual enemy? 
Yeah. Well, the name of our church is Abundant Life. And I love the way you open your program up, Real Life, that the, the, the abundant life is found in the Word of God. That's right. And uh, so we have all the intel we need on the adversary right here. And so, uh, you know, I, as, as we look at that key, key verse that we talk about all the time in John 10 and verse 10, uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, there's the battle lines right there. Everything that God wants to give us, Satan wants to take from us. Right. Jesus comes to set the captive free. Satan comes to take the free captive. That's good. And what I've learned in 18 years of ministry is even though, you know, the New Testament describes what ought to be the normal Christian life is life abundantly. 2 Corinthians 2.14, he always causes us to live triumphantly. 1 Corinthians 15, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. But too much of the time, Christians live in partial victory, mediocrity, and sometimes complete captivity. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I began to do a, a study years ago on how to appropriate practically the victory we have already positionally that Jesus won at Calvary. Because most Christians get stuck halfway. Enough faith to get out of Egypt, but not enough faith to get in the promised land. That's good. That's good. And so uh, this uh, book was really born out of a series I did years and years ago that our church really, really responded to. And God began to do in my heart something years ago about maybe kind of making a book out of that series in some way that I did years ago, but literally did nothing with it. Uh, you know, I kept thinking, why does the world need another book? Yeah. Everything that has been said or could be said has been said. And, you know, I don't have anything new to say necessarily, but I couldn't shake free from it. Same way God called me to preach. I tried to run. I was Jonah, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't get away. You can't outrun the call of God. Okay. And uh, so this was years in the making, literally. I had a manuscript that sat on my desk, literally, for several years. And uh, one day at church, uh, one of the ladies that is on the cleaning crew we contract with, they come in at night and clean our offices. And she comes up and says, Pastor Phil, I've been reading your book. It's really good. <laughs> I said, what? She said, yeah, you're writing a book, right? I said, well, uh, sort of. So <laughs> she'd actually been reading that rough draft. Mm as she would come in the office and clean at night. She said, oh. it's really good. So that's kind of a little bump from the Holy Spirit, yeah. like get this thing going and uh, get it off center. So I'm really thrilled now to get to put it in print. And I pray that uh, many lives will be transformed because of it. Well, and this is, would you consider this book to be like a manual for all of us to know how to defeat the enemy? I, or I would consider it very much a field manual. So, something I learned, you know, as an officer, one of, the, one of the best parts of the job, and I was a SWAT cop, but before we would serve a search warrant or know what to do, we would always send in an undercover guy or we'd have a confidential informant. We'd set up surveillance on whoever it was that we were watching. Before we'd make our move, we needed to learn their moves. Yeah. That was the most exciting part of the job was watching the bad guys, watching their moves, and only once we knew their moves did we know what move we should make next. And you know, 2 Corinthians 2.11, the Apostle Paul said that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. Yet so many Christians are. Hosea 4.6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right. And so consequently, so many Christians are held in captivity because they lack the knowledge, the intel, on the adversary. And so what this book does is really, really in some way chronicle the intel on the adversary. What Paul said that we're not ignorant of his devices, here's the point. Mm -hmm. To use a little mild police jargon, we know his MO. We right. know his method of operation because the same moves he put on Eve in Genesis 3 right. are the very same moves he uses on you and me in the 21st century. Mm. And so what we're doing here is exposing the strategies of the enemy. How does he try to steal from me and destroy the victory mm. that God wants to give me and lure me back into captivity when wow. Jesus has set me free? Wow. I like, I like your approach to, you start at the very beginning because a lot of people don't know what Satan's beginning was. You bet. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you do that. You... Where did he come from? Yeah. Who was he? God is not the author of evil. God did not create Satan That's right. as evil. In fact, Ezekiel 28 tells us he was the anointed cherub, literally that word Messiah, the messianic cherub mm -hmm. that covereth. He was in Eden, the garden of God, long before Adam was in Eden. 
uh, and he was reigning over an earthly kingdom and his purpose was to bear the light of God and lead the other angelic beings in the worship of God until one day he looked up into heaven. Isaiah 14, 12 says, he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the Lord. I will be like the most high. And from that moment, the rebellion and insurrection was on. It is a battle for a kingdom. He wants to be worshiped as God. And that is why he hates Adam's race so desperately because Adam, you see, right. was in that same garden. That's right. He'd been given dominion over Lucifer's old home. He had dominion and was sitting on his throne and he knew immediately what he had to do. He had to disqualify Adam from having dominion and that's what happened when Adam sinned. So Adam sinned and when he sinned, he passed a death sentence onto all of humanity. All of his posterity, except the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, That's came good. and undid the curse of the first. And that is why now we can be called the children of God, that we can bear the image of God, members of the kingdom of God. And listen, when you belong to the victor, you don't have to live like a victim. That's right. That's good. And you know who your um, accuser is. I mean, like how you just described it, it, it helps me put... Um, a face and it helps me put an understanding so that I know like you said his MO and I can just visualize and just say you're yeah. out of here. Well that's the victory mm -hmm. is, 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 in the, is in the power of the Holy Spirit. We've got lots to talk about but we yeah. don't have enough time. <laughs> Always that's yeah. the case. So I'm excited to tell you that Pastor is going to be our one of our coaching, mm -hmm. uh, one of our coaches and we're going to get into like some questions about how do you know that Satan was in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. or right. in Eden mm -hmm. before Adam. Because yeah. that's kind of a new teaching there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that? And how do we get the victory over the over the enemy? What's built into us that we have already been assured the victory? Right. And how did Jesus win that, that victory? Because you're right, mm -hmm. his, 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 his attack plan is always the same. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and the scripture is very clear on what it's going to be. It's a three-prong yep. attack. Absolutely. And when, when he comes at you, you can anticipate now. Yep. Can't you, Pastor? Right. Yep. Can't you keep your eyes open and that's, anticipate? That's the whole point Paul's making in 2 Corinthians 2.11. Our, 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 our battle against him is entirely winnable because he's completely predictable. Okay. Uh, we're not ignorant of his devices. And what does mm -hmm. Paul say there? Lest Satan should take advantage of us. Listen, if we're ignorant of his moves, he will take advantage of us. Now here's the point. We don't have to live in ignorance. We don't have to live naive against the enemy. He is predictable. That's what makes our battle winnable. We have weapons and we can win. Amen. Well, the book's called Defeating the Enemy. It's mm -hmm. very powerful. I, I highly recommend it, but I'm going to just tell you how you're going to get it in just a few minutes when we get into our coaching. That's right. Then we're going to make a special offer for you to have this book in your, in your world. Because mm -hmm. you know what? If we don't know how to fight, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get defeated because we don't have in ourselves we don't. the we power don't. to win this fight. Mm -hmm. We are overmatched. That's right. We're and, overmatched. You and, can't will your way into victory. You have to mm -hmm. fight your way into victory, but only in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's, and, I'm, and also just to remind y'all that there is a battle. Sometimes we don't think there is. And so as Don was just sharing. The people who don't think there's battle are the ones getting beat up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's really, what, it's really the truth. You're getting victory. beat up. Well, exactly. God gives us the victory. Mm -hmm. God gives us the victory. Well, you know, we're so thankful that you're here, Pastor. Yes. Thank thankful you. that you're here too. You know, Cindy goes and she finds the good news. Let's go find out what she's found in the headlines. Sutherland Springs is getting a new sanctuary. Plans are in the works to give the church where the tragic massacre occurred a new building. The pastor says God is res resurrecting and bringing the church back to life. The new building will be funded by private donations and it's expected to be finished by next spring. Rock legend Alice Cooper says Jesus delivered him from alcohol. Cooper told the New York Daily News his life took a turn for the worse 37 years ago. He says he was trying to keep up drinking with Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, and Keith Moon, but one time he woke up throwing up blood and knew his body was shutting down. When he got to the hospital, doctors diagnosed him as a classic alcoholic, but Cooper decided to turn to God instead. Since then, he says he's never had the desire to drink again and gives all glory to God for his recovery. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Lines. Have a great day on purpose. Share 
your God story. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Plus our brand new Christian Patriot Briefing. It's filled with ways that we can pray for our nation and take action. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Welcome to Real Life Coaching, where it's our goal to help you become the very best you possible, and then to win in life God's way. In today's session, Coach Tom Gardner explains how the breath of God leads us into His peace. Let's get started with coaching. Tom, this is a fascinating coaching session for me as we go into the, the truths about uh, the peace, the shalom of God and how to enter into that shalom. And you were talking about Jesus in one of our last coaching sessions and we talked about him coming out of the river after he's being baptized and being driven into the, into the wilderness for his temptation. Yes. I, I'm always curious about his response to the stone. You know, when, when the devil said to him, well, turn this stone into bread. Yeah. And then Jesus' response is curious to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, the amazing thing about that and that the whole context of that conversation is Jesus has been baptized. He's entered into his earthly ministry. And it says that the last part of that in Luke 3, I'm thinking of the Luke version of it, Luke 3, 21, 22. It says that basically the Spirit of God descends, the, the heavens open, Spirit descends in the form of a dove and says, you are my beloved Son and who am well pleased. Now the, the interesting thing about it, Don, is that Jesus had not done one miracle. Mm -hmm. He had not preached the Sermon on the Mount. He had not done anything mm -hmm. other than be beloved. So that for us is, is a big uh, understanding that we also need to come to. Uh, I was sitting with a, a small group of people the other night and they were talking about the realm of obedience and so on. And uh, maybe I was doing a little coaching session with them or something like that. <laughs> I said, you know, the greatest problem that you and I have is we hear, for instance, theologically that we are the beloved of God, but do we believe it? If we don't believe that we're the beloved of God, then we will succumb to some of the things that Jesus was tempted or tested by in the wilderness. Because the same spirit right. that said, you are my beloved son, mm -hmm. now leads him into the place of the wilderness. Interesting thing about wilderness, by the way. This is not all a Hebrew word study, but I'll give you one more. I love it. Though. Okay? Yeah. The word for desert or wilderness is midbar which comes from the root dabar. Dabar means to speak. It's in the wilderness that God speaks. Mm. Think about Hosea. And Hosea says, I, I allure my beloved or my, my people into the wilderness. I might speak kindness to them. Okay. So the Lord needs to bring us sometimes to a place of quiet. He brings Jesus, the Spirit leads Jesus into the place of the midbar, into the wilderness. <clears throat> and whereupon the the devil comes and begins to try to employ exactly the same strategy he never gets tired of employing. And that is to try to create doubt, separation, distraction, if we want to call it that. He is very good at distraction. He is the master of distraction. And so the first thing he says to Jesus is, very simple, he says, look, pretty hungry by now. He says, why don't you take some of these stones and turn them into bread? Mm -hmm. Now, there's an interesting thing that I've learned through the years, and that is this. I don't want to engage the chatter of the enemy. When I'm engaging the chatter of the enemy, I could get into this conversation with him about bread or breath. 
I could get him into get him into this conversation, and I could try to rationally, with my own human wisdom, and maybe quoting scriptures. By the way, the devil can quote many more scriptures than I can. Yeah. Okay, but I can get to the place where I am uh, using my own human wisdom uh, to try to overcome that. But the truth is, Jesus does not ever engage the enemy. You notice this that basically, uh, he just simply says, "It is written." And I think we need today to be especially people of the word. Uh, it is written. We need to be people who understand scripture and understand that scripture is God breathed. That's where we get the term, the God breathed life for the book, Theonustra, which means that something which God has breathed on. Uh, so we need to, to talk about this for a minute. Jesus does not enter the banter. He just makes a simple statement and he says, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. He's quoting Deuteronomy. He's quoting the Torah. Man doesn't live by bread. He doesn't live, live by the stuff. It's not all the stuff that we can have or control. He says, but man lives by everything or every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's where we get the whole idea of the God-breathed life. And it's the point of the book, isn't it? The point of the book is to say, how can I get to a place in my spirituality, in my relationship, in my intimate walk with Christ, where I'm living by the next breath? I'm living and hanging on every word that he says. I am giving him my life moment by moment by moment. Uh, we can have a tendency to separate uh, parts of our life is belonging to him and parts belong to God, uh, to, to me and this is my business world and this is my financial world. But actually, beloved, all of that stuff belongs to God. It all flows from the mouth of God. So we're talking about living by, uh, not living by bread. We're talking about living by the breath of God, God breathing on us. Mm. And I want to give us a, a little bit of an example of something here. Uh, when we think about the word breath, for instance, the word breath is in Hebrews ruach. There's, there's words that are different forms and so on. But this particular word we're thinking of is the word ruach, which means breath or wind or spirit or breathe, whatever. I want to remind you about something. Whenever we're thinking about sometimes when we're living in the past, regretting or living in the future, worrying about something, I want us to remember something here. And this comes straight out of, uh, out of the Torah, comes straight out of Scripture itself. And that is the, the description of how God created you and I, creates man. And it's a very, uh, very intimate sort of a thought. Uh, many, many years ago, my rabbi friend who taught me some Hebrew and Torah and uh, gave me some insights about Scripture, uh, we were sitting in a waffle shop. And I think we were probably the only two people reading Torah in the waffle shop, okay? <laughs> so we're sitting in this old waffle shop in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, he, was, he was teaching me some things about this, this whole creation story, the account of creation. And uh, it's, it says very simply in Genesis that God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. Let's say he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. But I got a much more intimate picture of it much more intimate picture of it. The picture I got was this. I saw Jesus because Paul tells us that all things were created by him, through him, for him, and without him was nothing made that was made, okay? But I got this picture, for instance, of Jesus uh, entering in, out of eternity into this temporal place. And I see him walking into the garden. And I see him that he's, he sees over in this little corner over here and there's this, this little patch of red dust. And because uh, that's, it's, we're not created from clay. We're created from arfa, which means dust. Dust is like, has no, no uh, liquid, no moisture, no anything. And if you just do that, it just blows into the air, okay? But I see Jesus pick this up and I, and I see and I can feel the longing in his heart for fellowship and to create something which can communicate back to him. And I see him take this and I see him go like this. And as you're listening to this uh, coaching session, if you do that in your hands, what you would find is that your hands become warm, but they also become moist. Mm -hmm. I believe that God created us from dust and the condensation of his own breath. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he has destined us to live these God-breathed lives. You see, when we're too hard on ourselves, 
And we, and we start to take our eye off of, our attention off of the presence of God, and we wander away somehow, basically understand that God remembers his breath in us. Mm. He remembers that we are dust held together by his mm. own breath. In fact, it says in Job and in Psalms, it says, if the Lord was to take his breath from us, we would return to dust. Mm -hmm. And so basically living this God-breathed life is a conscious awareness that there's something of God deposited in my DNA. Right. In fact, I, I read a, a study one time, mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago. I'm, I'm interested in a variety of things. And I was looking at this study and, the, and this person alleged that, you know, when you breathe on a mirror, condensation fogs it up. This person said there was enough DNA in that mirror to make another one of you. I found that fascinating. So I think that, you know, I carry, you know, we carry, Don, we carry the, the very DNA of God in us somehow. That's right. That's right. So he has breathed us alive so that we can just continue to worship in it, can continue to be connected to him in that place. Interesting thing, the word for worship, halal, is a returning of the breath that God breathed into me. It's halal. That's a returning of the breath that God breathed into me. He created me, and I am giving that breath back to him in my worship. Just another little side thought. Oh, man, it's fantastic. But the, the whole idea of this God-breathed life, I, I think about the, the uh, fact of uh, when the two people are on the road to Emmaus, and then they eventually get to the place where they're staying. There is a, there's a particular point where they're walking down the, uh, the, the path and Jesus has been opening the word to them, explaining who he is according to the scriptures, to the Torah and the writings and the, the prophets and so on. He's explaining who he is. And we know that they, that they are going to say later, our hearts were burning. There was something in them that was actually being transacted. And so basically they get to this point where it looked like Jesus was going to keep going, but they begged him to stay. Because you see, what Jesus did is he connected with that longing. He connected with his breath inside of them, his spirit that was already inside of them. And they invite him to come and stay. And now there's a little bit, as I understand it, a little breach of protocol that Jesus did. But since he's God, he's allowed to, okay? And that is when they got to the place at Emmaus, where do they sit down? At a table. Jesus wants to bring them to the table. You see, in the first conversation in this book, we talk about them coming to Jesus' table. And that's about us being understanding and abiding with him. But you see, that's not the end of the story. Jesus now comes to my table. And he takes the bread. And he blesses it. And he breaks it. And he gives it to them. Because you see, Jesus wants my table, my life, to become his. He wants not only to dwell in me, but he wants to have his life expressed and breathed out through me. He wants me to have a God-breathed life that is now extending out into this world out here to see the heart and the character and the love of God all together. Amen? And so basically we come to this place where he wants me to be connected to him and then says that those two brothers went and they later on told their other uh, friends, the other disciples, uh, it says that they were recognized and that he was recognized in the breaking of bread. In fact, interesting thing, uh, and that is this. When the two brothers go back and they join the other uh, disciples, the other followers, it says that Jesus walks into the room and he breathes on them. Mm -hmm. In my own thought and my own way of looking at this, at the fall of man, the breath of God was knocked out of us. Mm. And after the crucifixion, Jesus comes and he breathes that breath of life. And we once again become living souls. That's good. Amen. Having played football and had the breath, the wind knocked out of you. <laughs> I understand what that analogy is like. The, the, the <coughs> Spirit of God fills us. And I love, I agree with you. The DNA changes when we're born again. I just think Amen. we get God's DNA, eternal Amen. DNA. Now, the book, you wrote the book, Living the God-Breathed Life for the purposes of what? what Tom, what's your, what's your heart's desire for this work? To bring people to this place of intimacy and intimate connection with the Lord in a practical way. In fact, we, uh, the Bible, again, is loaded with scriptures. And then basically we get to the end of each chapter and there's a... a 
a part of it, which is uh, us joining the journey. Mm -hmm. We're going on the same journey uh, that the, the followers, the, the first conversation or on the road to Emmaus, we're going on that same journey, we're joining them, and we're giving very practical exercises as to how we might do that. For instance, where we're asking the question, what are you seeking after the first uh, section there, we might be asking them, asking people to begin to list what are the thoughts that you hold all day? What are you thinking about? What makes it a good day or a bad day? What makes it, what is important to you? What are the things that, uh, what's in your, on your calendar? What's in your checkbook? Yeah, we good. start to look at how we divest ourselves of those things. What are we focused on? That's how we know what we're seeking and that's how we know what level of peace that we're in. And one of the things we point out is the things that I seek beside the Lord are the things that will rob me of that peace and presence. So we, we try to make it very practical and we actually want people to get started on that whole journaling journey as well. Well, and that's why we're making this work available to you. Want to give it to you. This is our gift to you with your gift back to the ministry. So as you plant a seed of faith, we're planting a seed of faith into your life because I believe God's got something very special for you. I do. I, I believe he's working in your life in a very unique manner and you're no one's like you. There's no one like you and no one can do the things God has called for you to do. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are, or how old you are, or how young you are. God has his hand on you. He's got his DNA in you. If you've asked Jesus to be your savior, his DNA resides in you by the presence of the Holy Spirit. So you now are a child of God. You're a royal priesthood. A holy nation, the Bible says. So we will give you this book and this DVD that Tom made while he was with us as our coaching uh, partner, and we want to plan them into your into your life. And why you say why do you do that? We do we do our coaching so that you can discover who God has made you to be, step by step, principle by principle, line upon line. Because there's so much more to life than what we've encountered. There's just so much more. So we need to open our eyes and open our heart so that we don't put God in a box and make him a religious experience. We open it up when we allow him to be everything to us. And the more we give to him, the more he gives back to us. When he gives to us, there's supernatural stories that happen. Things change, your body changes, your mind changes, your relationships change. Your future changes in alignment to his plan for your life. Isn't that what we want? That's what I want. That's what I want for you. And when you get in alignment with God, stories like this happen. Isolation, detachment, seclusion, these are all words to describe the emptiness and pain that I have been feeling inside. After 50 years of marriage, my husband and I have been separated for four years. I still love my husband very much, and I've tried everything I could think of to save our marriage. I prayed each and every day that God would bring my husband back into my life. I decided to call the Cornerstone Prayer Line and I spoke with a prayer partner. She told me to be strong and to put my complete trust in the Lord. A few days later, my husband called me one night and we talked for hours. We reconciled our differences and now we are back together. Thank you, God, for restoring my marriage. Your grace and your faithfulness never ceases to amaze me. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I loved it when Tom took his hands yes. in yeah. that coaching session and he talked about Jesus formed mm -hmm. the dust mm -hmm. and then he breathed his, his, yeah. his uh, mm -hmm. condensation onto the dust. Because you know, I've always kind of, in my mind, you know, I just think that he just reached down and got clay and yeah. kind of like molded it and... Spit on it, you yeah, know. Well, or so. wet clay, you just kind of <laughs> made a little model, Play-Doh kind of thing, and became, mm -hmm. became man. Mm -hmm. But, you know, his exp explanation really spoke to me because the dust, which is 
kind of just moving around. It's just yeah. freely moving. And, and in yeah. that part of the world, there's a lot of dust. It's desert. Mm -hmm. And he breathed on it. Mm -hmm. And that dust became moist mm -hmm. with his own breath. Uh -huh. yeah. And then that became what he used to create Adam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shows you how intimate God yes. was yes. in creating. You know, he spoke everything else into existence. Mm -hmm. Everything he said, let there be, and he, may, he, he spoke it into existence. But Pastor Amy, the only thing God didn't speak into existence was Adam. Nope. Mm. He breathed. I, I love that, that the very condensation of God, exactly what he said, that there mm -hmm. is something of God deposited on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how many people, they woke up this morning and they just think, I'm not worthy, I'm not valuable, I'm not mm -hmm. loved, nobody cares about me. I don't know, who would love me? Mm -hmm. um, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he does not forget that deposit of himself in you. That's, That's right. why we say so simply, we're sons and daughters of the most high God. We're not just some distant creation from this mighty God and he's just so disconnected. His very life flows into us. And that's such a great word picture that he presented to yes. us about the mm -hmm. breathing in because I, I know that some of you may not have had parents that yes. did extend love to you or, right. or were kind to you, but what a great way to visualize the ultimate love Amen. giver is by just knowing his very breath poured into your mm -hmm. being and that breath was full of love and yes. completeness yes. and just acceptance in who you are. Amen. I think that's how we know we're sons and daughters. Yep. Well, and that's so why we, we're very happy to present this, te this teaching book to you. The God breathe. Mm -hmm. See, you notice living the God breathe life. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't live that life, then we're living one that we've created for ourselves. And that life isn't very productive and it's not very fulfilling. And it's just fr frankly not a fun life. God's life should be a fun life. Mm -hmm. You know, the Garden of Eden translates in the original language the Garden of Pleasure. Yes. Yes. So, but God, 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 He, he cares about pleasure. He created pleasure. Yep. He enjoys it. The word says it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So with your partnership with us, whatever that gift level can be, you know, just ask the Lord. We want to send you the book and the DVD that we created with Tom when he was here that goes into depth. Mm -hmm. I mean, into the very depth of having that intimacy with God, that personal relationship with him through the Holy Spirit in different layers and levels. You know, that's what I love about the faith, sisters, is that there's levels of development. You never get to the top. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> no. you start with salvation mm -hmm. and then you go to the next. Salvation cost us nothing, <coughs> right. cost Jesus everything. But then as you become a follower of Christ, it mm -hmm. starts to get costing us. Mm -hmm. We've got to die to self. Mm -hmm. yeah. It costs us ultimately everything, but then we gain everything. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not, it's not even, a, even exchange, mm -mm. but God has made a way for us through the power of his spirit to have that God breathe life, life. Mm -hmm. that God breathe life. And Terry, that's the kind of life that has purpose today yes. and passion today and then for tomorrow and eternity has mm -hmm. fruit. Fruit wow. for eternity. Mm -hmm. Just as soon as tomorrow? What What's for today, today, tomorrow, and eternity. That's awesome. It goes forever. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. This kind of life yeah. never ends. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I like what he said too about Hallel, mm -hmm. about worshiping. So God has now breathed in us the breath of life and departed something of himself in us. How do we... How do we thank him? Mm -hmm. How do we get back to him? What, how can we say, God, thank you? Right. What, did, what did the Psalmist David say? How wonderful are your works, O God. Man, that I, I'm, I'm a man that you even thought of me and considered me in this way. We give back to him in worship and that is us breathing back to God. And like, almost like an exhale. We, 
We breathe in, in Him and we breathe out our worship and praise. Take time today to worship God. You know what worship does too? It gets your mind focused off of yourself mm -hmm. and off of everything that's going on and it gets your eyes focused on an amazing Father who holds the world by His hands mm -hmm. and who can control and can help and can even recreate things in your life to Jesus. and turn situations around. Amen. He is a good father. Let's, and that's what we sometimes Amen. lose sight of, that he's right. good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I, it's revealed to me that, that many watching right now are watching this with a, a little bit of a question mark to say, that can't be true for me. Mm. It can't be true for me because I've been so far away from God. I've never really lived in a place of harmony with God. It's mm -hmm. always been about me. Mm -hmm. But listen, friend, I'm, I, I want you to know this, and this is the last few minutes that we have here. God planted in you when you were born. He planted in you a measure of faith, a mm -hmm. seed of faith. So he put his fingerprints in you. I like to call it a God spark. There's a God spark in you, even if you haven't stepped into a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. It's the starters in you, mm -hmm. right. and God will activate that with just your word, just a simple prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. Father, I receive your forgiveness. I'm a sinner. Please save me. I yes. accept Jesus as my savior. Mm -hmm. I want to be with you forever. Yes. That little simple activation, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit then boom, comes right inside of you, activates that God spark and you become a brand new creation, just like that. So I, I'm gonna, somebody, somebody needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. So call us, 888-665-4483, if that's you. Mm -hmm. If you have, through faith, activated that God spark, and you can then see your life become this life, living the God-breathed life. Mm -hmm. So from now on, you're walking in harmony. Now, is it gonna be easy? No. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be a struggle and a, a fight? Yes. But can you have the victory? Through the Holy Spirit. You can be more than a conqueror. You can rise up. You're, you're, you, you have the greater one. Then you have the greater one in you. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So we encourage you to call us, mm -hmm. get the book, get the DVD, take it into your life and start cultivating, Pastor Amy, that mm -hmm. cultivating that harmony and that relationship that God started with us. He started, he's courting us. Right. He just wants us to respond. Right. Mm -hmm. All we have to do, like you said, is respond. It's not a forced thing. It's an unforced relationship. I love what he said. God wants to express himself through me. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what happens when you're working with God and working with him. He'll express himself through you. And he, when you walk in the room, you light up the room. <laughs> right? Well, let's pray. Let's pray. We always pray on real life. We come to the Lord. Terry, would you lead us in prayer for all of these folks that's called? Um, Father, you, Father, we just come before you. And Father, we thank you for your many blessings in our lives. And Father, we just come before you now. Yes, and Lord, Lord. we yes. just receive thank the you, breath Father. of God that's within yes. us. Jesus. And we just yes. excel your love. Yes. And we just worship you, God. And for you, all Jesus. of these needs and, and requests that are before us, Lord, we just thank you thank that, you, Holy Lord. Spirit, that you empower, you redeem, you restore, yes. and that you hear, Father you, God, Jesus. and you listen. And we give this all to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You've got a, if you have a need that you're standing in faith for, just raise your hand and say, I receive, I receive. in Jesus' name. Jesus. See that God breathed life's in you. It's coming through you. We're so glad you're watching with us. Tune in tomorrow every day on Real Life as we bring God's word, his answers for real life into your, into your life, into your living rooms. God does what he does supernaturally. And tomorrow we're expecting that great move of the spirit. We'll see you then. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.